welcome to my channel. Well, I got another thrower type of flashlight. This is the Workos new release TS12, and it's a 14500 size thrower. And as you can see, now this is this is the TS11 with an 18650 tube on it. It normally comes shorter, 18350 type of tube. So <clears throat> oh my screen is it was flashing it was doing something weird with the contrast um <clears throat> but all right this is this is my main reason for one of my main reasons for getting this first when i'm using a, a spotlight or a, a I, I tend to use a spotlight more on my balcony to you know try to identify what's out there a cat you know which type of cat or whatever and I don't want to light up the whole area because the whole area is already kind of lit up I just need it to focus on one particular spot you know spotlight and uh, that way you're not shining lights in everybody else's living room stuff like that I mean you know it, it has its uses but I don't need long run times I, I don't need you know long run times on on this particular situation what i need is something that's compact small and get get out there the other thing about this that's kind of unique is you have a usb-c charging port on most 14500 type of flashlights that you get uh ace beam pokey lit has a rechargeable battery and uh the workhouse ts 10 doesn't even come with one unless you order a little, you know, battery charger. But, I mean, it's it's, it's the same type of uh, battery size, a 14500. But, like this one's 900 milliamps. But, if you're carrying that type of battery on it and the thing runs down, you either got to have another 14500 on you. Because this one, just like the TS-12, only runs on a 14500. It won't run on a AAA or a, or a NICAD or anything like that. Because its operating voltage is 3 volts. It's got to be at least 3 volts for it to, to start working. <clears throat> Anyways. It... Of course has a smaller head than these other ones. But it's, it's a... A thrower type of lens, not a not a TIR like these guys are, but it's just you know deep cone with a tiny little emitter there. I mean, I think I got fingerprints on the lens. Tiny little emitter in there. They don't say what it is, unless unless this is this is the emitter number. But that's the. Uh, the tint range color tint range and of course it's made in china now what i added to this you don't get a pocket clip and what i added to this is the off the sopran sp10 i took this clip off it fits in there perfectly now you have to pretty much put it right here above the button just because when you're trying to put it in your pocket and everything uh, or clip it to a belt or whatever with this over here like this This ramp is in the way you see how you have to do that. So you do it like this and This this button feels pretty good. It's scalloped And everything so I this is the way I usually do it. It also helps me find the button at night, too You know because the flat side is also back here But you have this rubber thing. I Don't know. I haven't tried it on this side but I just usually carry it like that. Now, it's a tiny little flashlight. And it's got a crenulated bezel here. I mean, they're trying to make it like a little mini striker. It's got a uh, magnetic base to it. So let's get out this older marbles swing guard. kind of hard to hold it on just that it's not a, a super strong magnet but it'll work 
<clears throat> All right. Now, my, uh, my two criticisms of this light are, number one, no pocket clip. As you can see, I understand why they probably didn't want to put one on there, but they left, they left the uh, cutout for a pocket clip on there. You know, so you, they could have done something to accommodate a pocket clip. You've got a lanyard hole, but look how they cut the, the lanyard hole. So if you've got a lanyard in here, even though it's a thin lanyard that they supply with this, I mean, you know, the string is really thin. I've got to get this thing out, out of its box. <clears throat> and I have put it in there and everything. Um, it keeps it from sealing real good if you're using it as a magnet. And for tail stand, standing or everything like that, it wobbles. You know, when that's on there. Now, all they had to do, workhouse, if you're listening, is instead of going like this, cut it through one of these. Cut it sideways. And that way you can still do your lanyard loop and everything, but it doesn't interfere with the tail stand ability. Anytime you see one of these, this is like somebody in engineering said, I'll just drill a hole like this. Yeah, well, you've never used one. Like that, okay? You'd never tail stand with one like that if you did that. All you have to do is change your orientation. So the vertical go horizontal, all right? Anyway, <clears throat> now, the other thing that I've got about this, it's not super, it's not super bad. Let me turn this light off. It's the tent. The tent is, is very green on this one, which... Probably means that the CRI on this is not good. It's probably like less than 70 or, or something around there. The color rendition index. Now that's not too bad with it being a green because if, if you get used to it and everything, it's all right. Now it has a moonlight. This is a very simple operation, mode of operation for this flashlight. There's no endural and stuff like that. But you've got moonlight, low, mid, high turbo you have a strobe a sos and a beacon um you have a switch between stepped and ramping mode and that's it <clears throat> so let's let's read this right here workos ts12 is a mini powerful edc flashlight for indoor use and outdoor activities like camping hiking finishing emergency etc Powered by a 14500 rechargeable lithium ion. Unique tiger head. Tiger head? <laughs> Design with bezel. Simple user interface with both step modes and ramping. Friendly to everybody. What's more, it's a long range flashlight. It delivers a maximum output of up to 1050 lumens with a maximum range of 432 meters. It will be your reliable partner for outdoor activities and daily use. <clears throat> so you can see the... But look, you're only going to get 0.75 an hour. Because remember, unless, unless physics changes and everything, the smaller the battery you've got in there with the same amount of lumens and output, you know, a lot of this depends on the efficiency of the driver and the emitter and everything else. But it's like a gas tank. You're trying to go the same speed on this tiny little gas tank as you are with like a 21700 or something. It's not going to happen. It, it's, it's not going to happen. Unless you change uh, physics, it's not going to happen. But a lot of times, like I said, I don't need, I don't need a, uh, a spot constantly, you know, so... When you first turn it on, you're going to get this little green light here. This is in the moonlight mode right now. Which is the th Also, the good thing about moonlight and spotlight, one of these throwers is, this can really throw. I mean, you can really, you can do more with this moonlight. You get more range with this moonlight. It says 11 meters is of what you can get. Look at moonlight on on most other flashlights and you're not going to get 11 meters on one lumen this is kind of the beam pattern there's a little 
you know there's a central spot here with a little bit of a ring around it you know fuzziness and everything and uh you don't see this other when you're outside you don't see this peripheral flood that much until you up the the lumens all right so there's turbo and really with a little it's hot on my hand right there it's getting warm on my hand now it gets warm back here it doesn't get so much warm up at the head because the uh the emitter is so far down there so the heat starts generating up here not up here and uh, it goes through the whole flashlight but <clears throat> let's read the rest of it of the instruction manual here um, so you have one meter impact resistance ipa ip68 x would mean like dust resistance i think but ipx ip68 is like i don't know you can keep it submerged for so many minutes under one meter of water and it won't see it says high quality lad man it would be nice if you would have said something other than that operating voltage three volts to 4.2 all right so what that means is when your uh, your battery gets down to three volts or anything that's under three volts it's not the, the flashlight won't operate that's good that's going to save your battery it's not so much for the flashlight it's for the battery to keep it from over discharging it takes one 14 500 like i said it won't take an alkaline and all this other stuff this thing is small i've got a big lighter down here to you know show you in comparison but it's a tiny little it's a tiny little thrower man i mean 132 meters like i said you're it's not going to something you're going to use forever it has the temperature regulation technology in there so it's going to do there and reverse polarity automatic step down to prevent overheating aerospace grade aluminum alloy 75 grams without a battery <clears throat> so green on that light means it's good and red means that you're less than 30 percent flashing red means it's critical if the battery's voltage is lower than 2.7 volts ts12 will turn off automatically to avoid battery damage by over discharge it has a usb-c port for convenient recharging of its battery while charging the led power indicator flashes red once finished the indicator will turn green to indicate a full battery while reverse charging once the indicator flashes red it means poor power and stops reverse charging automatically so i think what they're saying here is that this you can use a usb-c to usb-c and make this thing like a little power bank but you don't have a lot of juice in in a, a 14500 you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to recharge your phone or anything like that but it, it might make the critical difference let's say you're carrying this around your phone's dead and you happen to have a usb-c to usb-c charger I'll, I'll try this i'll hook it up later on and see if it'll actually charge like that but again remember you've got a very tiny gas tank you know that you're trying to get stuff out of you can't get blood out of a rock double click to activate turbo mode single click to return to the previous fuse mode Flashing mode, quickly click three times to enter strobe. Double click the switch to cycle adjustment, strobe, SOS beacon to return to the previous group. Ramping mode from off, single click to turn on. And you basically just adjust these modes, the toggle between group one and two, while on, four clicks to switch between both mode groups. Two flashes will confirm the mode group change. And then you can do an electronic lockout on there, which is from off. I think you do uh, four clicks. Yeah. From off, quadruple click to activate lockout. And then you have to do another four clicks, you know, to deactivate it. It kind of misleads here. It, 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 it makes it seem like it says, in return to the previous mode, another click, more than two clicks to deactivate the lockout again. And return to the previous mode. So let's lock it out. One, two, three, four. 
Give me that double flash. Let's do a one, two, three. Nope, it's still locked out. So you still have to do four to get it to come on. But, I mean, reading that instruction manual, it looked like it said anything beyond two clicks. Anyway, we figured that out. <clears throat> and then they give you your caution, don't point the beam directly at people, animals, or moving vehicles. Well, what are, what are you going to spotlight? How can you avoid all that stuff? Don't disassemble it, uh, troubleshooting and all that, and then it gives you the different languages. <clears throat> so, like I said, my you get a you get a USB A to USB C charging cable, and then these uh, extra O rings. O rings. They could have put a, a pocket clip in there. I mean, I think it'll work. So far, it hasn't activated or anything, but it has a tail cap, so you could just screw this like this. You know, if you're worried about it coming on. But, I like it. It's about, it was about 23 bucks from Workos without the battery. I got it with the battery, which is on like $2 more, which you, you, you're going to have a hard time finding a decent 14500 for $2. And, um... It shipped from China. It took uh, about 10 days from the time it was shipped to arrive. So that wasn't too bad. And uh, so far, everything has a niche. You know, that's why you got a bunch of different flashlights. That's why you got a bunch of different size knives. It's because every different size has a, you know, a different purpose and a different thing like that. So um, I don't really have a whole lot of beam shots I can show you outside. Uh, with it or anything like that um, but I'll I'll point you I'll have in the description another channel where he really tests it outside like in uh, Thailand in the jungles and stuff like that and you can get an idea um, but yeah this was just my initial impressions and uh, yeah I'm impressed like I said the main reason I, I, I got this was the rechargeable the built-in rechargeable capability you know, so that if you're around a, because you, when you got a small size, small capacity battery, you either got to have another battery with you or the ability to recharge the battery that you've got in there. And if you've just got a standard battery and, and a flashlight like the TS-10 that doesn't have a charging port on it, well then even if you run into a, a 5 volt USB port or whatever, you're not going to be able to use it uh, on this unless you've got a separate charger. With this flashlight, that eliminates that problem. You just plug the sucker in. So, yeah, I like it. Um, like I said, the only thing they could do different, there's a couple of things, there's a few things that they could do different. The location of this hole right here is one. Add a pocket clip, even if it doesn't look like it'll work, guess what? It works works for me and through my belt loop I run it backwards like this and have the belt loop come through here and this is the perfect size let me, let me hook it up here I don't know how good it's going to be to get knocked off because I tried different things with, with belt loop carry and uh, see like that so if I want to if I want to use it I'm trying to get the Pull it out. Putting it back in is not as easy because you've got to thread the loop up the belt material, up over the ramp, and then start it. But once you get it in there, it's pretty secure, and uh, it's accessible. And if I got my SE3, it'd be on this side, the handle sticking up a little bit, so I'd have like a little wedge going forward, like a little bow. But that's where I carry that thing recently so far, and uh, like I said, I'm I'm impressed with it. I'm happy with it, and it's not much taller than a Bic lighter, and not very wide in the bezel. I'll put all the little dimensions down there. But yeah, that's my initial first impressions of this, and uh, I'm impressed with it. I like it. 
I wish they would change the emitter to uh, a little bit better one, but maybe that'll come in the future. But for right now, eh, it's all right. You know, once like I said, once you get used to seeing that green color, or if you don't have anything to compare it with, then it's still light. You know, I, I put up with yellow tints and uh, super bright white tints and everything else. As long as it gets out there and does what it needs to do, fine. Uh, so anyways, that's my initial thoughts. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.